Okay, so this is insane. There's something I've been saying for like the past two or three months now, and I had initially thought that like, okay, maybe they're a little tinfoil hat, you know, like maybe it's a little too far. After seeing kind of what CN is talking about in relation to Yomiya, Yai, Jean, and, and all of these other things, I'm starting to think that it's not actually that crazy. So what's going on, you guys? Today, I'm going to be talking about a CN conspiracy theory that makes a little bit too much sense to me to be false. But of course, at the end of the video, I want you all to make your own conclusions about this or decide whether or not to listen to it. You know, it's all up to you guys, but this has been bothering me for a while. I was going to save this topic for another video, but I actually saw 1010 streaming a couple nights ago and he was basically talking about this thing and how CN was bringing up these issues that I had initially mentioned. And so I guess in a way, this is me making a video about 1010's video about a Billy Billy video that aligns with my initial beliefs. Yeah. And so I decided that I would just push that video up, not make it scripted, just talk about exactly what I think is going on. Okay, so anyways, you guys have been waiting long enough. Here is the deal. In essence, this conspiracy theory boils down to characters being rushed, designs being changed last minute to meet the six week patch quota, and the proof is in the game already. So everyone, let's put on our tinfoil hats and uh, let's get right into it. So the two main players in this game are Yoimiya and Yaimiko, but we have lots of other characters to talk about still. So first off, off, I'm going to start with the really, really simple stuff, okay? I have been saying for a long time that Yoimiya's dedicated artifact set is not Shimanawa's Reminiscence. People don't want to believe me because it's technically the highest damage ceiling. It feels really good to play. I mean, at least if you're not playing it optimally, right? Because you can just press E and then you get big numbers. But what I've been saying for the longest time is that Yoimiya's artifact set, her dedicated set, is actually retracing Bolai. Whether or not it's the best set is another thing completely, but you cannot deny that these look very close to Yoimiya's design. So here you go. You have retracing bull eye. This is the flower. You have the feather right here. It looks like a dart. There's summer nights moment. Uh, we do know that she's the queen of the summer festival, right? Uh, and then we have the water balloons. Water balloons can be seen everywhere during the summer festival. Yep. So, okay. So this is another reference to the summer festival and the design looks so similar to Yoimiya. Notice how it's got orange. It's got the blue knot, kind of like what she has in her hair right up here too. And it's got a mask as well, which we know we're also a part of uh, the summer festival. It also talks about fire works. Yeah, so this entire lore here on Retracing Bullite is talking about the Summer Festival and then telling a story. It also mentions a foxy-eyed woman, which could also be a reference to Yaimiko because it does talk about Inazuma specifically. So the idea here is that the lore all kind of lines up with Yoimiya, the design lines up with Yoimiya. But then you can look at the set, right? You might be thinking two-piece set increases shield strength. Yoimiya doesn't make a shield. It doesn't matter. Here's the thing. If you activate the shield on another character and then switch to the character with Retracing Bullite on them, whoever has the set on them gets the shield bonus. Yomiya has five normal attacks listed in her kit. Some of them hit multiple times, but the hardest hitting ones are one, three, and five, with five being the hardest hitting one of all of them. Which means that if you get your combo interrupted, you're losing a ton of damage on Yomiya. Now, what helps you not lose your combo? Well, not getting hit or getting hit when you have a shield up and can't be interrupted. What does Retracing Bullseye do? It gives you shield strength. It's encouraging you to play a shield with Yomiya. But then you can look at the four piece set as well. It gains normal and charged attack damage damage bonus of 40%, which is almost as high as Shimanawa. So like you can see that this is clearly a set that works very well for Yomiya and actually promotes the comfort of play thing that I like to talk about all the time where Yomiya is just a super nice and simple character to play and she becomes even easier if you have a shield and you don't need to dodge anything. And this fits that perfectly. I've been saying this for so long that this was her intended set and Shimanawa was meant for somebody else. So CN caught on to this and CN's been talking about this combined with some other things as well, which we're going to talk about right now. So in terms of other artifact designs, you have Emblem of Severed Fate, right? This one is very clearly Raiden's set. It is specifically tailored towards Raiden. Now it does work on a lot of different characters, but the lore is about the Shogun and it works best with Raiden because she gets bonus damage from her energy recharge, all that sort of stuff. So very clearly, this is Raiden's set. It was designed for her. You can make the same argument for retracing Bolide. Maybe that implies that Yoimiya was supposed to come out alongside the Liwe 3 and use Zhongli's shield because obviously all the three Liwe main characters, Hu Tao, Ganyu, and Xiao love Zhongli's shield. So maybe she was intended to come out during the Liwe arc. I'm not sure in Yoimiya's case, um, but that's another thing CM was saying. But anyways, back to Raiden. Like this is her set, right? And it would make sense for them to put Yai Miko's set with Raiden's set, right? Like that, does that... That would make sense, right? Well, as it turns out, 
It also talks about lore that is very similar to Yamiko. It has the Kitsune mask, right? It mentions a Shrine Maiden very often, very many times. Like, you just go through this, it all talks about the Shrine Maiden, Lady Kitsune, all of these sorts of things. So the design aesthetically fits Yai. It's also paired with Raiden's artifact set, so it would make sense that it would go to Yai as well. So why does it work horribly with Yamiko? Well, part of the conspiracy is that they just changed her kit last minute. Now, I think I'm allowed to say this because this this time has passed by like a lot, Yaimiko's already out. Very, very early on, probably three months or sooner before Yaimiko's release, somebody was talking about how they had an early build of Yai and she was basically supposed to be an on-field DPS, the electro damage ceiling, and she would have a turret that counted as normal attack, charge attack damage to enhance her overall damage output, which perfectly lined up with Shimanawa, right? And now as you can see, her normal attacks and charged attacks don't do a lot of damage, but they have very cool animations. Animations. You can tell Mihoyo or Hoyoverse put a lot of effort into these animations because they're beautiful and her charge attack is unique as heck. It's awesome. So it would make sense if she was supposed to be an on-field damage dealer, a normal attack, charge attack user, especially if she was supposed to spam charge attack. But as you can tell, with her stamina cost now, it, it's very clear that they tried to make that not what she is right before she released. Well, in the beta, evidently, and this is all things that I've just heard, I can't confirm these, but evidently she had some stat changes in the beta that made her work at normal and charged attack damage. Now, I don't know how drastic those were. I, she might have come into the beta and already been bad at those. But I think the interesting thing to me is that she does have a kit with three turrets. Now, that leak that that person was talking about a very long time ago, what did talk about turrets. It did mention that that was a thing. So a lot of people wrote it off as like, okay, clearly this is like untrustable, untrustworthy, not a very good source of information. But it wasn't so far off that I think it was unreliable. Because in the end, she still did have have a turret and she has three of them now so it's possible she saw a huge rework that made this set not work with her now why would this be a thing because i don't think they have enough development time for each character and all of the content they're putting into the game you guys might think that they're not putting a lot of content into the game but it takes a long time to develop an entire region to develop an entire character new animations changing stats and all of those things that it takes a while and i don't know six weeks does not feel like that long of a time i'm gonna be honest these are just some of the things, right? CN is also pointing out other stuff as well. One of them in relation to Freedom Sworn, which I don't have the weapon. Up. Okay, one second. Okay, so look at this weapon, right? This is Freedom Sworn. Freedom Sworn looks very, very cool. I like the aesthetic of it, but we can all agree that this doesn't match Kazuha's design. Clearly, the stats on the weapon imply that they're for Kazuha, but the weapon itself doesn't match Kazuha's aesthetic, like, at all. It doesn't look like it belongs to that character. It's just a good weapon with the character. Now, why would they make a weapon like this Kazuha's weapon when they could have made him, like, a, a more personalized one? Or why specifically wasn't this weapon for another character? It actually fits near perfectly on Gene. I don't know if you guys can see this. I just found a random image, but like, look at the aesthetic of this. First off, Mondstadt is the city of freedom, right? So it would make sense that Freedom Sworn would be a weapon that goes to someone who is, you know, sworn to Mondstadt and protecting its freedom. And the aesthetics, it just fits Jean so damn well, right? But the weapon itself isn't that great for her. It's not, it's not awful, but it's clearly not her dedicated weapon. The other thing to consider is that Jean got a skin that same patch that Freedom Sworn came out. It's entirely possible that Jean was supposed supposed to get Freedom Sworn as a dedicated weapon in addition to her skin. And then why would they not do that? Because Kazuha was coming out and they couldn't figure out an entirely new design for Kazuha within the six weeks that they had to develop the entire archipelago, the entire story quest, and more of the Inazuma stuff that they were also working on at the same time. It just makes sense that it would be very difficult for them to do that with only six weeks of time of development, especially considering how many mechanics were in the archipelago. So if you take that and you consider that, like, it is very easy to change some numbers and a passive ability of a weapon, it is not very easy to change the entire design of a weapon and create lore behind it. Which is why I think that the lore of Freedom Sworn aligning with Jean and the City of Freedom makes a lot of sense if it was initially meant to be her weapon. This same thing could be applied to the Amos bow. Okay, if you go way back when, here, this is like really far back. This is April 1st, 2020. You go back to the official demo, right? You can see that Fischl actually is using Amos bow in here. And now she has her own four-star bow, the Midernox Waltz, right? But if you look right here, this is Amos bow. This almost seems like it was made for Fischl. You can see that it changes from blue to purplish as you level it up and get it closer to max. That would make sense if it was dedicated to Fischl because aesthetically it would fit her in that way. But as you can tell, it's a Ganyu weapon. 
which means it's entirely possible that they didn't feel like they had enough time to finish the weapon for Fischl before they started working on Ganyu, or maybe they didn't have time to develop a Ganyu weapon, or something of the sort, and as a result, Ganyu got Amos' bow and the effect and numbers that perfectly work for her instead of giving that bow to Amy, who is official. Now, we might be grasping at straws here, like this might not actually be what happened. This could be a complete conspiracy, there could be no truth to it at all, it could be like completely wrong. But I think to me, it makes too much sense that the reason we see these rushed story quests, or these story quests that maybe feel a little unfinished, like I, I'm sorry if you really like the story quests, I personally feel like it was a little rushed, I still got a lot of enjoyment out of it, but compared to the earlier story of the game, it definitely didn't feel as fleshed out, right? And I think a lot of people can agree with that. So compared to the, the rushed story quest, right, the unfinished Inazuma Islands that they've had to release one every patch of, the possibility of them changing some numbers around on some weapons, changing some character kits last second just so that they're usable, but leaving them relatively unfinished because like that's just what happens when you rush development, it all lines up too well, in my opinion, for this to be untrue. So I guess what I'm saying is I kind of believe what CN's talking about. It, it makes a lot of sense that they would be rushing development because it's a six week cycle. Like that's just not a lot of time to develop something on a scale of Genshin Impact. And personally, I would love if they would take more time between patches and make the events, the islands and exploration and characters all more fleshed out. I would love to see them take more time, assuming we'd get more content for the game. But to be honest, I don't know if that's gonna happen. I think the six week cycle might actually just be hurting Hoyoverse development. Now again, I don't work for Hoyoverse. This is all a tinfoil hat theory. This was developed on CN, but these are thoughts that I've been having for a very long time, especially about the Yoimiya set thing. It has been really bothering me. I was going to make a whole video on it. But again, since I saw 1010 make a video on it, I decided to report on 1010's video of a CN Billy Billy video of it because it's relevant now more than ever. So needless to say, CN is pretty upset with Yaimiko's design, which I think is good because I think that if they're upset and we're upset, then like odds are higher of us seeing Yaimiko improvements. Like honestly, if they just increased her NA charged attack multipliers, maybe took away some of the stamina cost of her charged attack, I think that would be amazing. Like even that, making her slightly more viable in one playstyle or another is still a good improvement. So if we could just get like a little bit out of Hoyoverse for Yaimiko, if they're able to admit or at least internally admit that like, okay, maybe this product was rushed and able to make some changes, that'd be fantastic. Right now, I don't know if the six week cycle thing is working because it looks like it's just too much to develop all at once. But again, that's just a theory, dare I say it, a game theory. Anyways guys, what do you think? Do you think it makes sense? Do you think retracing Bolide was meant for Yomiya? Do you think Shimano was initially meant for Yai and she got changed? Let me know in the comments below. Let's make sure not to like doom post about it. I think that a lot of times when influencers, creators, YouTubers, Twitch streamers say some things, people can take it out of context, amplify it to be a hundred times worse than what it is. I'm just bringing to light some things that I believe may be affecting why some characters came out the way they did. Because to me, it makes a lot of sense. However, obviously it's just a theory. So if you guys have enjoyed, make sure to subscribe. I also go live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash A few days a week, you should definitely come check it out and uh, I'll catch you next time.